a love-hate relationship. <laughs> and, and I'm not trying to say we're bosom buddies and we're all that close, but we do have a relationship. We have texted, this is no exaggeration, there have been days, a couple of days, we've texted for two, three hours straight, huh. okay? About life, about basketball, about media, uh, about faith. And I've, I've, I've challenged him on his faith and because we do share a faith walk. Neither one of us is perfect in our faith walk. And I've challenged him and he's challenged me. Hmm. And, and our faith, common faith in Jesus Christ, no matter how flawed we each may be, has always enabled us mm -hmm. to come to a point of civility okay. and understanding. Even if we disagree, disagree and even if we agree to disagree, we've always been able to come to that point of understanding. So this tweet, people are like, KD clapped back at you, KD went. This was tame. KD has gone at me much harder sure. privately. Mm -hmm. Like, he doesn't do it every time, but when I've said things on TV that he doesn't agree with, he, he will come back at me privately. Hmm. And he's called me names. He's gone at me much hmm. harder than that tweet. And again, we've always been able to talk it out, come to a place of understanding. So that, this tweet was, was nothing to me. And what I'll say, obviously, he, he tried to go at it literally. Right. Oh, worst nightmare. Sure. Right. Obviously, it's a figure of speech. Right. Just that this, this narrative, conflict. right, this narrative that has followed him and dogged him could be coming to pass and get worse if, mm -hmm. if, if, this, if they win it without him. Mm -hmm. But he, I, here's what I feel about the tweet. I hope KD does have this perspective. Mm. I hope he's saying, man, I'm blessed. I know what I came from. I came from a broken home. I came yeah. from poverty. And now I'm an NBA superstar. My family is taken care of. My future family will be set. Nothing that happens on the basketball court. No basketball... <laughs> He was like, what to go seven? It's like, oh, it was touch and go there. If they'd have had Kevin, it would have been a lot easier. They'd best around and get Toronto and Milwaukee and win this thing in four or five games. How does that help Kevin Durant's legacy? Mm -hmm. They swept one series without you. They win the other one in four or five games without you, and you did, oh, huh? Nah, instead of you, them saying Kevin Durant saved, nah, Kevin Durant got rescued. What? He was drowning. And right. Steph Curry and Draymond and Clay and Iggy swam out to him and brought his butt to the bay. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kevin. That's what's coming. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening, KD. K if, K like I said, if this team was 47 and 35, if this was a 40-40 team before he got there, struggled, got out the first round once, got swept, made it to the second round. He goes there, put him over the top. Kevin Durant to the rescue. How you gonna rescue somebody that's already sitting in the lifeguard chair? He ain't drowning. But you were, because guess what? You had that team down 3-1. The very team that you joined, you had them down. Mm -hmm. And guess what? And they beat you, beat your tail. In order for you to stop getting your tail beat, you go join them and kick everybody else's butt. That's true. That's how they looking at you, KD. I'm sorry. Man, what Steph Curry's done, like I said, you know, he got a nice car. You know, we don't really like a whole lot of people driving our car. Mm. Steph Curry had the nicest car on the block. Mm. Drive a Ferrari, because that's what Golden State is, a Ferrari. Mm. He said, KD, if you come over here, I'll let you drive. <laughs> KD said, for real? He got out and got in the passenger seat. Mm. KD got in the driver's seat, and they done been driving ever since. Mm. But, K but now Steph back in the driver's seat, so I ain't getting out again. So the one word in Kevin's response to your stance that told me that he didn't really have a big problem with you personally was the word B-U-D-D-Y. He called you buddy. Yep. And I don't think he... Tosses that word around loosely, and it wasn't sarcastic. It was it was genuinely yeah. buddy, and I believe he still considers you love hate buddy right. more than <laughs> the, the other way adversary. Right. right, and yet, you know, and I know that Kevin is constantly sort of internally battling with identity crisis. Who am I? We went through the whole thing. Am I a nice guy or am I not nice, Kevin Durant? Do I believe in God or do it? Should I really believe in God? Do I really buy into it? Because he seems to just go back and forth yeah. and he's constantly Struggling. internally yep. conflicted with all of the above. And now he's facing the biggest decision of his career. And the point is, what, the reason he responded publicly instead of privately to you is he wanted his followers, he wanted the, the basketball world out there to know. He does take issue with your stance about this because you hit a deep, hot button. Sure. You, you hit a sore spot with him because he knows that what you just detailed is happening right before our very eyes. 
and it hurts him. He thinking about it. It's, it's thinking you about it. Like you said, bring... it's human nature. Yes. Yeah. He didn't human... text you and say, Chris, you're all wet or whatever right. he said. <laughs> no, like, he didn't say that. Bro, you wrong for that yeah. one. Right. No, he, he, he had to do it publicly, but, but gently and nicely and gentlemanly to you. Hey, buddy, you know, there are worse things in life. There's not a worse thing in basketball life than what he's facing right, right. now. So now we're to what Shannon and I went back and forth on earlier in the show. The only way out of this that I see for Kevin right now is, let's say he 95% heals, 100% heals, and he starts game one against, let's say it's, who knows, Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Sure. And all of a sudden, let's say that Steph and Clay and Draymond are shrewd enough operators. They say, you know what? Let's go ahead and make him re re refocus the whole offense around Kevin. Right. Let let's make him the sun in our offense again. And we'll go back to being what we were through the regular season and through the last two finals. And Kevin rises and shines again and becomes the third straight finals MVP. Well, that could solve all the problems because then he could be back in the driver's seat. But you still think that does it? Because I'm, I'm not so, like, I, I feel like the, it, obviously, if he's healthy, he should play, I guess. That's what your instincts tell you. Right. Sure. But the best thing for him basketball-wise is if they lose that first game. He doesn't play. Okay. They lose the first game. And he comes back. Then he can come back and, and they went they right. right. Well, maybe the very best thing is if he doesn't play at all and they lose to Milwaukee. That would, okay? Because right. I do think, like, if it diminished, look, you got to give him credit for the two rings no matter what. Yeah. He was the driver. He, he, was. Was the, he was a finals mm -hmm. MVP. He was great. He outplayed LeBron. But if, he lose, if they win this series without him, it does diminish those two a little. It does. Yeah. But no. if they lose the series yeah. without him, it elevates those two. Then you got to say, no, they did need KD. Mm -hmm. Okay, and but so what a sorry even, situation you're describing to, to put him in. To, right. I'm not going to play, and I'm going to root against my team, That's right? Weird. That's right. You can't. You, right? you said it, though. Maybe they win in seven, a tough seven. But without. We, but we know what this was about. This was, Both parties was about LeBron. Golden, they, State, Golden State didn't feel they could beat the Cavaliers again unless they got KD. KD knew he couldn't beat LeBron unless he linked up with them. So they combined forces. So now... They beat up on little poor little LeBron. So LeBron out here, you know, <laughs> we got to deal with what we got to deal with to try to solicit some help for us. Mm. We don't like to do that, Skip. No solicitation. We are no solicitation area over here in LA. Mm. You might need that, to. That's yeah, the saving to. grace for KD. As much as I've said he's been a luxury, not a necessity, they, very, they did need him for LeBron. Yes! If he doesn't go there, I think Golden State, Cleveland is like Boston, L.A. Yes. Like, like Bird Magic. Maybe they split the next two years. I do think Golden State would have won the next year. I don't think they so. They would have been so upset and felt like they blew it, and Draymond would have been motivated. You know but then Cleveland may have come. It was, I think it would have been, no, been tough. Because think about it. KD averaged 35. Yeah, but, I mean, that's because Steph and those guys just took a back seat. And we had, Draymond, this is the best basketball Draymond's oh yeah, career. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. And you wouldn't be seeing it if KD was there. By the because way, you just don't have the room to do it. Draymond lost, what, 25 pounds through the back half of the season? Yeah. I think yeah. Rachel Nichols had that. Mm -hmm. You hear what he uh, gave he, up? He stopped Cheetos, Cheetos wine, tequila, fried and food. No, he just. That was it. Those 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 damn, how you, drink, how you tequila, do all that and still tequila, play basketball? Uh, right. How was he playing as he was? I don't it's know. Like I mean, that okay, is. Okay, so bottom line to the discussion Chris Broussard at this moment believes that Kevin Durant next year will play where? I'm still going to say New York with a caveat. Look, like, yeah, I know his agent came out and said it's wide open. Mark Stein wrote that the Clippers are in the yep. hunt. I do know the Clippers impressed him before he went to Golden State mm -hmm. with their meeting. I know he likes Steve Ballmer. That's obvious. Their front office, L.A., you don't quite have the media attention you would have in New York, you know, with the Clippers. How I think it's for KD, it's going to depend on other guys. Like, I, I think he's smart enough not to go to New York by himself. Mm. So what, what's Kyrie want to do? What's Jimmy Butler, who I think would be a little lower on the list, want to do? This would be the AD, same. is that a possible? You know, like, I think it, it depends on Skip, you said that. this is the biggest decision. No, nah, he already made the biggest decision to leave OKC and go join Golden State. This is a breeze here. We got to This is big, though, because, look, I think he could move into the top 10 of all time. Sure. But he yeah. kind of has to go somewhere else and do it, your, like, lead your right. own team. Yeah. 
So that's why this. That's why this is huge. Mm-hmm. Okay, good stuff, Chris. That was interesting to hear your point mm-hmm. of view there. How Chris, about you out this? of pocket hey, for D, that comment? We cool? You out of pocket, Chris? For that for what? One. What do you mean? <laughs> Let's be talking about free agency. Will the Lakers drama keep the free agents far away?